I screwed up. This was supposed to be a simple little video about you know, one of those fun facts that you hear so much about. A little perceptual bias that gets us to eat more food, something you read about in the newspaper or something like this. Instead, it got a little more complicated than that. So what you're about to see is the original video that I made. And then after that, I will come back and explain why it's really not that simple. If you use bigger plates, do you end up eating more? Yes, but not for the reasons that you probably think. Let's start with this question. Which of these two black circles are bigger? These look like the same size, at least to most people, but the circle on the left is actually smaller than the circle on the right. If they were the same size, they would look like this. This is called the Delboeuf illusion. Our brains do not make precise, absolute judgments about amounts or sizes or lengths. Rather, to figure out how big something is, our brains have to compare it with something else. When the inner black circle is close to the outer ring, we tend to unite the two together and the inner circle looks bigger than it actually is. When the inner black circle is smaller than the outer circle, there's a big difference between the two and our brains tend to make that inner black circle looks smaller than it actually is. Perhaps these circles remind you of something. A series of experiments established that these perceptual illusions correspond very closely to the amount of food that people serve themselves. Give people small plates and they serve themselves less, even though they think it's the normal amount. Give people big plates and they serve themselves more even though, again, they think it's about the normal amount. So why do the researchers in this article argue that this illusion is causing us to eat more food. Well, we need another fact for that. Turns out the plates that we use have gotten bigger. Their best estimate, based on plates they found on eBay, is that the average plate diameter in 1900 was 9.6 inches, and the average plate diameter in 2010 was 11.8 inches, an increase if you're keeping track of over two inches in diameter. So replacing your larger plates with smaller plates could reduce the number of calories that you consume without you really thinking any more about it. Yes, there are about a billion other ways that we could reduce the amount of food we eat if we're interested in doing that, but changing your plates is a very easy thing to do, and it kind of feels like you're outsmarting yourself. Pretty much every claim that I made in this video is at least open to question. So let's run through the argument that I am making and pick apart each piece. Big plates lead people to serve themselves larger portions. Why? That's the Delboeuf illusion. Big portions lead people to eat more. So if you're interested in reducing the number of calories you eat, you should trade out those large plates for smaller ones. Do people serve themselves more on larger plates? The answer could be yes, but the results of the studies I've looked at have been inconsistent. So some say yes, some say no, some say maybe. And so this is not really a consistent, robust finding. What about the Delboeuf illusion? Well, there is some research that suggests that hunger actually reduces the illusion. So remember when I said our brains do not make precise absolute judgments about amounts or sizes or lengths. Rather, to figure out how big something is, our brains have to compare it with something else. Well, that's not 100% true. A couple of studies suggest that when you are hungry, you are less susceptible to the Delboeuf illusion for food items specifically. So what your brain is doing is your brain is making a more absolute judgment of the amount of food on the plate. And of course, if that is the case, then the Delboeuf illusion can't be contributing to increased self-serving portion sizes on the big plates because you're only serving yourself when you're actually hungry. What about larger portions leading to greater caloric intake. This actually does seem to be true. This has been replicated in many different studies in a variety of contexts, and it just generally seems to be the case that if you are served a larger portion, that you will tend to eat more food. 
Now, the proposed mechanisms behind this vary a little bit. Some say it might be related to bite size. There is a fairly strong argument, in my opinion, that it's related to norms or anchoring. So when you see a large portion, that is a signal to you, a kind of unconscious signal to you of what is normal or expected to be eaten. So that becomes your anchor and you adjust how much you eat based on that norm. So what about real life tests of plate switching? So that tests the whole theory itself, and never mind the illusions and other things like that. If you give people smaller plates, does it reduce the number of calories you consume? Well, this also has been tested and the results are pretty lackluster. There's a couple of studies that suggest yes, but there are probably more studies that suggest no, there may be a small effect here that you're not seeing in some of these smaller sample sizes, but it is certainly not a large, robust, replicable effect. So the whole premise of my argument in this video that switching your plates could have an impact on how many calories you consume is just not true at all. It might have an effect, but there's not a lot of evidence to say that it will. Of course, having smaller portions served to you should reduce your caloric intake, at least on average. But the big point I want to make here is that this is a tiny example of how the media distorts scientific evidence. You focus on the results and what one research group says without paying attention to the wider context or the conversations that are happening between research groups or the controversies that exist. In the social sciences, and I think this is probably true across the board, in any scientific field, in, in the humanities, in almost everywhere, you have to be careful of neat packages. So arguments that come already bundled to you, I've solved all the problems in this little area, this is the solution. Now, occasionally, neat packages are- Stop this video right now! I read another meta-analysis. Look at these beautiful plots. The researchers are trying to figure out if there are trends in the data that would explain why one study you see an effect and another study you don't. And they make a fairly compelling argument that there are trends to the data and that small plates actually do lead to smaller wastes if people aren't aware of what's going on. When people join a food study, they can either be aware that they are in a food study or not aware that they're in a food study. If people are aware that this is a food study, then you don't seem to see any change in consumption with people using smaller plates. But if they're not aware that it's a food study, then you do see a difference. You, you tend to see a difference in terms of consumption. By the same token, if you are at home and you start using smaller plates, you're probably not gonna see a big difference in terms of the amount of calories you consume in the short run, you know, in those weeks after you change your plates. But in the long run, as you start to forget that you change your plates and those smaller plates just become the normal plates that you've always used. Then you do start to see trends where people start lowering their consumption. At this point, I am more sympathetic to the position that small plates do help to reduce overall consumption. But it is a fragile effect, especially if people know that you are trying to test them in some way. It also leaves several questions open. If being hungry reduces the effect of the Delbuff illusion, then is that a legit explanation for what's going on here? Or maybe it's just a red herring. How big is this effect and how long lasting is it? And what are the limitations of it? There's a lot that we still don't know and it'll probably take a few decades of research to suss everything out. But that's how science goes. I wanna sign off with a quote from Ben Goldacre who you can read more about in the description. I think you'll find it's a little more complicated than that. See you next time.